this is yours truly, Apostle Carol P. Lloyd with CPL Ministries. My mission today is to let you know I have been blessed to be a blessing. We're going forth with a continuation of what has already taken place. And for you that's out there, we pray that you receive the blessings of God. Because we're trying to make sure that we as children of God have the full understanding of the word of God. And we're talking about the Christian and development of a changed life. You hear me? The Christian and development of a changed life. So as this is going on part two, just give you a little where we were and how we started out. It lets us know what a Christian is, the definition of a Christian is, are people who follow and adhere to Christianity based on life and teaching of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. A person who have received Christian baptism or a believer in Christianity. So that's the definition of a Christian. The definition of development is a special state of growth or achievement. The process, in other words, of developing or being developed a new and refined product or an idea. That's new that you know what this dictionary gives you for development. And the word change mean make or become different. Sustain, should we say, entirely transform. To reach, to change one from what you were doing to what you ought to do, give you a better understanding. So, as I say, the topic is Christian and development and a changed life. It's a preparation, making ready or being ready for the use, all right, or consideration that God is going to use us to glorify him. So what I'm coming forth out of the scriptures in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 through 27, it speaks, he said, I will sprinkle you with pure water and you will be clean from all your impurities. I will purify you, in other words, from all your idols. Wow. I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your body and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. I will take the initiative and you will obey my statutes and carefully observe my regulation. Now this is an Old Testament where the Lord is already speaking. Ezekiel is speaking what God was going to do. And that was preparation. He was preparing us for such a time as this. And Romans, in our time, we're speaking in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, said, because man is born of sin. All have sin. All means all. And fall short of the glory of God. He must be born again. Well, Ezekiel was talking about that. That's in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, it said, Sin cannot enter into heaven. Romans 6 and 23 tells them. For the payoff of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when man accepts Christ, he is born again. What I've read is out of the New Easy Translation. When man accepts Christ, he is born again. So we're going forth to give you some understanding about where I was speaking before, but just to give you an update, I don't need to go back to everything, but we're mainly coming out of also John, where Nicodemus was talking about how one must be born again. He went before the Lord and began to ask a question. And for you that know, he said, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. And he said, what, what do you mean? I got to go back into my mother's womb and come back out again. But he was not talking about that there. He said, no. 
And that's where the scripture began to let us know where the Lord was speaking at, that who is born. So it is whatever a man is born, he's born in sin. But now we're being born, a transformation is going to take place in the spirit. So he made, he's made new in Christ. He becomes the son of God. But to all who have received him, those who believe in his name, he gave them the right to become, all right, God's children. Excuse me. He gave us the right to become God's children. <coughs> and man cannot change his life without Christ's help. It's impossible. So we're talking about after salvation, we receive Christ. We've been delivered. We accept him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So there's spiritual growth in a person, and that's what's taking place. You're a Christian, you're being developed, now there's a changed life. So some of the topics that I talked about already was called the consecration of Christ. Of Christ. It lets us know, therefore, since we surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, again, we must get rid of every weight and sin that clings to us so closely. Now, I'm reading again from the Easy Translation. He said, and run with endurance the race set out for us. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, not man. Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set out for him, he endured the Christ. The Lord endured the Christ. He went through this. He regarded the shame he had. He has taken his seat at right now at the right hand of the throne of God. The comparison that Christian life is compared to a foot race. Mm. Anything that we get involved in and in running, it lets us know lay aside every weight and sin that so easily, which do so easily beset us. Mm. Do you not know that all the runners in the stadium complete but only one received the prize. Mm -hmm. Everybody runs, but only one received the prize. But in this race, each individual who run this race in Christ, they're winners. Wow. You don't have to worry about somebody beating you there. Mm -hmm. It's your choice. And so now, as we continue to run, we see that we are competitors, not with God, mm -hmm. not with your friends, you're competitive with the devil, <laughs> okay? You must exercise self-control in everything. It's, it's about you and nobody else. God has given us a free will from the beginning of time. And as I look back in the time of Genesis and when Adam and Eve, the Lord gave him a free will. And guess what? We still got that same free will. And the thing about it, the Lord told Adam, one thing not to do. Everything else he was able to do. But one thing, he didn't make Adam not take That's right. and be disobedient. He's not going to make us. But he gave us a free will. He didn't make Adam into a puppet. Mm. He gave him a choice of freedom. Mm -hmm. We got a choice of freedom. So, but because of Adam and his one one, think about it, people of God. One thing of disobedience. He disobeyed God. He was kicked out of heavenly places. He was in control of every animal. Mm. He was the one who was dominant over everything. Think on it. That's right. But because of his disobedience of one thing, God said, don't eat of that tree. Mm. But he disobeyed God. So Ezekiel comes back and begins talking about because of the hardness of the heart and the sinful nature that we had, that God was going to change it. And it came forth in the New Testament when Christ came aboard. And when Christ came, it changes. But right now, guess what? We still got that free will. But the only thing different about this, and I praise God, I don't know about you, but I thank God for grace. Adam did one thing. I can't even count how much Adam did. And I know good and well you can't do the same thing. You can't count how much you disobey God. But grace, hallelujah, 
when we should be destroyed, God's grace is love. Mm -hmm. He paid the price for us. I'm so glad for his love. That's called genuine love. He loved from the heart. His shame, all that he had to go through for us. And think about it. We don't even appreciate how he just blesses us. He continued to love on us. Adam was kicked out of the garden. We ain't kicked out of nothing. We walked out of it. But look at what God is doing for us today. So again, as I go for consecration, we need to practice and look unto Jesus for the many things in this race to look to him who's the author and the finisher of our faith. This pain, oh yes, mm -hmm. for the joy that we was set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross. He had to go through all that, but he did it for you and I. How many times you did something for people and they didn't even say thank you? Mm. <laughs> didn't even show their appreciation or their gratitude? And you didn't have to do it for them, whatever it was. But you did it out of love and concern. And they never told you thank you. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. I might have did some, some same thing. I don't know. Because, see, we only look at the good side now. But I don't know back then. And maybe prayerfully I pray that I don't do it now. Someone do something for you. Be glad to say thank you. Well, the Lord does that every day with us. Every day, there's not one of us walking around perfect. Mm -hmm. Not one of us can't say we haven't sinned. Sin is sin. Oh, I'm not out there on drugs. Oh, well, what you mean? I'm not prostituting. Oh, what you mean? I'm not drunk laying out there in the street. I, all those things that we want to call sin, but the Bible tells us about one thing. A liar come on will not come into his presence. Okay, so I said all that to say this. How many times a phone rang and somebody said, is your mother there? And she looks and see who it is. She said, oh, no, 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 no. She just lied and told that, invited the other person in and lied for them to make sure that both them, I two them lie. <laughs> Two people lie. We, we take that as a norm. Mm. We take that as nothing. Mm. But I pray as we go forth in the word of God, you'll see it means a whole lot. Mm. In the word of God, Christ was criticized. All right? He was betrayed. He was mistreated. He was denied by his own. Mm. You know, I can imagine his brother and the family members coming up. Because we don't see all that. We don't hear all that, but mm -hmm. you got to visualize mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine them saying, provoking him, Jesus, as a young man? We don't hear the history of him being young, no more than him going into the synagogue, and he's teaching, he's talking to people about God. But can you imagine them saying, you call him Joseph, your father. That's not your father, that's my father. Mm. Can you see them? Hallelujah. Can you really actually visualize this in your mind that they're saying to him, Joseph's not your daddy. We don't know who your daddy is because ain't no everybody believe what Mary told Joseph. Joseph, I, okay, he didn't, I guess he didn't take no DNA. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but what I'm saying, it sounds funny, but who's to believe if I got pregnant right now at this age? <laughs> oh Jesus at 79 and say Jesus did it well I don't know if Newtown here in Connecticut is still here but Newtown here in Connecticut was considered a crazy house if you act all crazy they would we used to say they come and get you in that white jacket and they're going to tie you up and you go into the crazy house if I was to tell somebody that now don't say God can't do it I'm not looking for it now, just in case. I'm just using this example, just in case. Mm -hmm. Somebody might be laughing, saying, no. Well, look at Mary, a virgin. Never touched, the man never touched him. But Joseph believed her. 
But I'm going back to the children and how they react. And not just the children, but look at everybody in the neighborhood. Okay, because we kind of separate them and push them aside. But you don't know what kind of lifestyle it was in that neighborhood. Everybody knew everybody, just like everybody know you. People are watching you, you don't even know they're watching you. But at that particular time, I'm saying this, how he came up, what he had to go through. Saying that he was Mary's, okay, Mary was his mother, but Joseph couldn't even say maybe. Joseph had to go forth because God spoke to him. So what I'm saying, the things that Mary had to go through, the shame that Jesus had to go through, said he was mistreated. He was betrayed. He was denied. And guess what? He was spat on. He was spit on. Let me say spat this way. I can see him now just spit on to it. Oh my God. And we go forth rejected. He came unto his own. They didn't want to receive. He suffered. He had to go through. He did that for you and me. And because of this, we ought to be so grateful and be ready for a change, ready to serve him. You know the wrong you did. I know the wrong I did. I'm not innocent. I'm just like everybody else. I'm not going to sit here and try to say I'm better than you. I came a long way. And guess what? God is still working on me. My place is to continue to let him know that I love him and walk up right before him. And if I fail him along the way, I need to repent and turn my life back around and walk up right so others can see the goodness of God that's upon my life. So you and I have to go through much as children of God a lot of times. We don't want to receive it. We don't want to accept it. But we have to go through. So Romans 12 verses 1, I believe in 2. He said, therefore, I exhort you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, mm -hmm. a living, should I say, alive, holy, and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed, all right? Do not be conformed to this present world. And that's why we do what we do, because we're, of, we're sinners, and we're in this present world. But this world is not your home. This world is not my home, but we have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may test, you may test and prove what is the will of God, what is good and will please and perfect. If we will practice these verses as we develop in strong Christianity, as strong Christian, we will not stay, in other words, we will not stray, and we will not backslide. Let me read this once again, because I want you to have a better understanding. It says, do not conform to the present world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may test and approve what is the will of God, what is good and well-pleasing and perfect, it will be practiced, again, if we practice these verses as well, developing into Christian, we will not stray and backslide. We will grow into a large, and, 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 and large bit of, we will grow into, in the Lord bringing honor and glory to God. This is this whole lifestyle is me bringing honor and glory to God to draw others to Christ. People may see God's glory upon you, but it's draw them to him. We are the walking epistles. We are the testimonies that bring forth life to others who are dead in sin. We represent Christ. He is a spirit. He abides in us. The spirit abides in us. Now we represent him. We are supposed to draw people to him through us. They know of our past. As we were speaking a while ago, uh, we thank God for victory production. Amen. Uh, uh, Pastor 
John, uh, listen, Pastor Jackson, <laughs> Linda Jackson, <laughs> and her husband, all right, Barry, we was talking about, you, you don't know how important your testimony is of your past. I know what my past was. I, I, I can't say, oh, I'm ashamed. No, no. My nature did only what it know to do, mm. to sin, mm. to act out. Mm. But now that I know God and I got his spirit in him, a change came in my life. Mm. Now I represent him. I don't represent Carol no more. Mm -hmm. I represent him. Mm. So as him being who he is, and I'm a Christian now, Christ-like, I, I got to walk after my brother. <laughs> We got to walk like our brother and, and, and his father is God. So we got to make that example who our father is because Jesus showed everybody who his father is. Mm -hmm. So now he represented his father. Now we represent the father too because our brother has taken and paid the price for us to live a life of godliness to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Not just the one to show forth and speak, look at my name and look at my title and, and look at my car and, and look at my ministry. Look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because your car ain't going to get you in the head. If you minister and live in the life as a Christian, you're going to promote others to want to know the God that you serve. Everybody remember your past. People remember my past. Those things that I did, I'm not boasting in them, but I'm thanking God for a changed life. As we spoke, we could not fit in with everybody. But God ordained and chose us before the foundation of the world. We were placed in our mother's wombs. We didn't know what we was going to become. We didn't know what was going to happen in life. But everything you and I went through in life before we even knew him, it was for a purpose. And that purpose was for him to get the glory. Because, see, I'm speaking of my past. Yes, my past pushed me into his glory. My past lifestyle wasn't beneficial to me. At that moment, I thought it was because I didn't know God. I didn't want to know him. Don't get me wrong, brought up in the church as a child, knew what it was to go to child, got baptized because my brother got the Holy Ghost at 14. And so I'm the third one down the line and I didn't want to be left out. It was three of us, it was really four of us. So he got baptized, my sister got baptized and I hollered, me too. Not because I understood, I just didn't want to be left out. I was left out so much in life I just couldn't understand it. But it was a purpose. So he got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I just got dipped in the water. <laughs> yeah, because and then they, they, they put so much fear and you going to hell. You going to hell. Well, I mean, get an understanding of why you're doing what you're doing. You're going to a better place. I don't have to scare you into go to heaven by threatening you. The Lord drawed us with his love and kindness. It was love that rescued us. It's love the reason why I'm sitting here. The death of the cross, all that he went through was for you and I. It wasn't for him. He did it out of love for us. And he set an example for us to go forth to show others how to prepare themselves. We're going to a greater place. Mm -hmm. This pandemic, what's going on right now, it's going to drive to draw people to Christ, or people going to run from Christ. They're going to stray or backslide. But this is your time to show true and genuine love. In spite of what I got to go through, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Because he's preparing us for a place on high. I call it a place on another place. Another level in Christ. But he's preparing us. We're being developed. How we need to get ourselves ready for this place. I don't know when the Lord's coming. What time is it we say? Hmm. The Lord's soon to come. What do you mean? It's been over 2,000 years I heard this. I remember as a child, as I got older, 
when the eclipse of the moon was coming. We was all afraid. It was a black mass. We thought it was Jesus, but it was just the eclipse of the moon. But it placed fear in us that we sat around under blankets, all quiet. Back in them days, you don't mind me saying it, you could hear mice urinate on cotton. That sound better, honey. <laughs> That's the best I could do. That's how quiet it was. It might sound funny, but there's humor in knowing the Lord, just in case. You don't have to be old pious. Mm -hmm. So what takes place, we thought it was the coming of the Lord. Every time we turn around, it's coming of the Lord. No man knows the day nor the time when the Lord's coming. With all this pandemic, over 10 million people done died. Mm. On this day that I speak, I believe it was the 13th mm -hmm. of November, 2020. Over 10 million people. Effective. And they said it's going to double up between now within the next couple of months. But the other thing, all I have to say, come Lord Jesus, I'm ready. Mm. Yes, we would miss our loved ones. But I'm lightening my load. If Jesus don't come, but if the death angel come knocking on my door, am I ready? Are you ready? Mm. It doesn't take this here virus to make me ready. Once I became born again, every day I'm preparing myself to leave here. It's not because of this. It's not because of what's taking place now. Mm -hmm. But as I said, as a Christian, developing mm -hmm. for a change, a changed life here to go where we're going. We're not going to glory in the same way we are now. Oh, it's not going to happen. We are going to glory because of a change of life. Here we start. Because we're going to a place called heaven. I want you to look at with this hair pandemic, what's going on. They give you, wherever you travel into, 14 days. You got to go in isolation before you even go to your destination. That's something to think about. This is what they have planned for you. Then, regardless how long you stay there, when you come back this way, you got to coordinate for another 14 days. So it takes 28 days regardless when you go and when you come back. That they want you to prepare yourself because they don't want you to affect nobody else. But think about it. Man has a plan and we're sticking to it. Some are, ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some's not. Some believe in the mask, all right? Some don't. And the only thing I can tell you. If you love yourself, you're going to wear the mask. Mm -hmm. And if I don't wear the mask because I feel that I'm all right, I can't love you. Mm. I can't really love you until I learn how to love me. So all these people want to say, no, we're not going to wear the mask because I'm under the blood. Baby, I've been under the blood some 53 years. <laughs> Passed in some 31. But I still have to listen to what history, knowledge, and science has given us. God has prepared us. God allowed this to come forth. If he want to stop, he can stop just like that. My friends, my dear friends, family members, has gone on. Can I say what they reason why they're gone is because they didn't obey God? I can't say that. I'm not God. Who's to know the mind of God? Maybe the time was up. There are young ones out there. There's old ones out there. The oldest one I found out so far was my cousin back here in May. 101 years of age who passed away. 
I can't say, well, she did something wrong. But I believe the Bible gives us three scores and tens, and I know some say 120, some says this, but regardless what time it is, when your time is up, only God knows when it's up. But out of obedience, getting back out of obedience to men, we wear the mask. If we don't want to be obedient to man, we can do like we've been doing. Being obedient to God, we put the word in us and walk in it and apply it in order to make sure we're going where we're going. And after we get there, we don't have to worry about no more quarantine because we're home. <laughs> but are we willing to abide by the word of God? Are we willing to change our mind? Are we willing to, like it says in Roman again, I'm going to read it again. I'm reading, it says, Therefore, I exalt you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a sacrifice, alive, holy, and pleasing to God, not to man, not to man. Please, everybody, God has already set the standard of how we ought to live according to the word of God, a holiness. I know people don't want to hear what I have to say, but I came up in, in a time, and some still don't believe, of being so strict. We couldn't do this. We couldn't do that. It was man standard, but it wasn't God. And for you that's out there who's still afraid, we couldn't go to the movies. We, 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 we couldn't play with a deck of cars. A deck of cars wasn't mean you were gambling, you were playing, you were enjoying the family, sitting around playing something. I'm just using that. We couldn't play Monopoly because Monopoly had dice with them. <laughs> That's man. Because of man. But man has not sat down and got an understanding. Because, see, we got some dictators. We got some Stalins and Hitlers out there carrying a different kind of title. Bingo. He says, but pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service? Do not be conformed to the present, this present world, be, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may test and prove what is the will of God. Don't be conformed to the world. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't go here. Study the word. You are not from the Old Testament. I'm not going all into the depths of that. But you, we are in the time of grace. And what God told his people, his people back then, he's not speaking the same way now. Yes, we got to be holy now. Don't get me wrong. We got to have a heart like him. But there were certain things that they was told that they had to do, some rituals that they had to do, certain things they had to do. That's Old Testament. And we're trying to bring Old Testament into our time and saying that you can't do this and you can't do that. I'm not going to get into the history of all those things. Because I want you to just get the transformation right now to not be conformed to this world. So what is good, we need to make sure. If we practice these verses as with developing into Christians, the Bible, we will not stray and we will not backslide. We will grow in the Lord, bringing honor and glory to him. So this is what this is all about, we as people of God. We must learn to understand the things that God has for us. We have to go to the place, the book, to get to understand. I had to go into the Word just like everybody else. And certain things that was handed down, and we accepted. Because... The Lord told me, I have to speak for myself, Carol, stop being lazy. Study. Like the Bible says, study to show yourself approval unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, knowing how to rightly, rightly divide the word of truth. But because I was accepting everything everybody else was saying, because they were there before me, they knew more about God than me. You speculate. Just because that means you're in church all those years, that don't mean God is working with you in all those years. It doesn't mean that you have committed yourself to the Lord in all these years. So after it, the Lord said, it's time for a change. Study. 
Then when I got to studying the certain things out, the Lord said, because you thought men knew more than you did, because you young in the Lord, they were there for years. Even though they were there for years, that don't mean they studied. So they sat around and said, this, you do this and you do that. You can't do this and you can't do that. And all it takes is us to sit down and open up the book and let God break it on down for us. Give us a better understanding or the right understanding of what's being said. So after I looked and seen all those things, it was time for a change. And it's sad because people believe more in man than they do God. And that's where God is jealous now. He's a jealous God. And I believe with all this pandemic that's going on, people have turned from God. People start worshiping false God. They worship all kinds. I, I, I could put out, you could label all these things people are worshiping, but they put God behind. God said, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. When we get back in our churches, they will never be the same. They will never be the same, but God got a plan. So being that we as people of God are calling ourselves or saying we're Christians, we're studying and got the development going, and we got to understand the word, it's time for a change. All right? When I say it's time for a change, again, that Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not be conformed to this present world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may test and prove what is the will of God, what is good and well-pleasing. God has formed man of the dust of the ground. Genesis 2 tells us God has formed man of the dust of the ground and man became a living soul. God, okay, God has formed man. Not man conformed man. God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. Genesis chapter 1 and 2 tell Mankind was the crown of God's creation. Let me say it again. Mankind was the crown of God's creation. God created man in his own image, not somebody else. <laughs> His own image. Somebody said, what do you mean? Yeah, our colors. You, 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 man didn't make these colors. <laughs> All this prejudice going on. God knew what he was doing. So you say God's a multicolor? If he's multicolor, he's multicolor. But man did not make man what color he is. And we're so bitter and angry. Because we're trying to define how we got here. <laughs> so yeah, my great grandmother's white complexion. Father's Indian. And I got some African. Okay. But I'm still from God. Was created by God. We're trying to tear God's work down. My God. Think about it. God did this. And man's trying to turn it around and destroy what God has done. Guess what? Man's turned around trying to destroy what God's created, God's people, with jealousy and anger, killing, hanging, destroying women. Man is trying to change what God has created. You cannot get all one color population of people on this earth. Amen. I don't care where you go. There's somebody's mixed in there with a color that's not your color. Somebody's speaking a language that's not your language. We've, we got to stop and think. Oh, God. Mankind was crowned of God, creation. God created man in his own, men, in his own image. Male and female. Male and female. No two men can have a baby. No two women can have a baby. He said be fruitful and multiply. I'm going to just leave that there. I love you. I got families. 
in all kinds of direction, doing all kinds of lifestyle. I love you. But he said, be fruitful and multiply. No two women can have a baby. No two men. So go read your book and learn some more. For he was given dominion over all God's creation, his beasts, the fish, and the fowls, the birds. Dominion. God gave man control, gave charge. Adam had control over him. Amen. He gave him charge. But sin has deformed. The wages of sin is death. Sin has changed. It has deformed. Romans 6 and 23 said, For the payoff of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You and I must realize we pay for what we've done wrong. It might not come to say this sickness is because what you did wrong. This loss of this is because what you did wrong. It's because things come upon you, that's the price you pay. Sin, again, has turned around. And we turned around. And we've been paid. Man was re removed from the Garden of Eden because of this disobedience. Think about it. One thing. He was moved from the Garden of Eden because of one thing. Sin marred man's image and brought sorrow, suffering, and death to human race. That's why we're going through. It was sin. Jesus Christ. He tells us many things that we've got to go through. The perfect Lamb of God, he died for all our sins of the human race. Hear me say that? Human race. All. And look how the enemy has us so divided, fighting one another with God has created. Man didn't create us. God created us. And the devil done stepped in and got us fighting one another. It's not, it's not, it, it, it's not God that's causing us to fight one another. It's the same person or same spirit that was kicked out of heaven mm -hmm. because he could never make it back in there. So he's trying to make sure, hey, when this is all over, I'm going around getting all I can because we all going to burn in hell. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It's your choice again. God's not a manipulator. He's not, we're not puppets. So here it is. Man was removed from the garden because of his sins. It brought, man's image brought sorrow, suffering, and death to human race, race. Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, died for all of our sins. Galatians 19, 5 and 19 said, Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Oh boy, here we go. The works of the flesh, y'all. Sex, immorality, impurity, mm -hmm. idol, idolatry, sorcery, mm -hmm. hostiles, strife, mm, jealousy. Now, this is the New English version. Outbursts of anger. Ooh, Jesus. Self. The mission facts uh, say so we say um, giving out different facts lying, envying, murder, drunkenness, carousing, and similar things. The scripture said, I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I want you to just look out there. We're not, you don't have to judge and just go around trying to find fault. You see it on your news. You see it in the streets. You see it among one another. People not having no self-control. Religion has reform. 2 Timothy 3 and 5 says, Having a form of godliness. You hear me now? Religion. But denying the power thereof, they will maintain the outward appearance of religion, 
but will not go forth and show the power of God. To avoid people like these, we must do. You can't hang with everybody. Just they say, I come in a Honda, cock a doo doo doo. You know how it is. We say all those things. It sounds funny, but it, 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 it's, I'm not trying to sound arrogant or anything, but those are the way we say Just because somebody's speaking in tongues and prophesies and laying hands on you and all these things. Let me tell you something. You don't realize the devil has power to. You hear me? The devil has power too, but it's not good power. There's holy power. Holy power. The devil works with all this deceitfulness. People have sold out their souls to show forth power, but it's not godly power. It's power that would do damage. Many artists, uh, singers, and whatever have sold their soul out for fame <laughs> which you see a lot of things that on TV now the commercials and everything they're not godly there are certain things that's going on in people's life they're not godly but the world has made them famous because the devil has made way for them to become famous and because they become famous, we're looking at the fame and how, how famous they are, and we just glorify them, but that don't mean it's of God. We got to realize, true religion is based on Bible principles. Bible principles, Amen. which cannot be improved. God's word is authentic of <clears throat> theology, psychology, and physiology. It's perfect. You can't change it. Religion that offer refrain. Religion that offer refrain along falls short of its real potential and its purpose. The saving, cleansing, redemptive power of Jesus Christ is the only basis for true effective religion. Man's religion it tells you things that's out of the will of God. But they say it so persuasively, they know how to bring it to you. As we were speaking, as we get all these things on Facebook or whatever, if you send this to 15 people, you're going to get a blessing before the night or before the next day. Oh, you're going to receive this and receive that. Your blessings come from your obedience of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful. There's a lot of false prophets out there. But there's people who believe they could get it, blessings just by doing their little thing. And that's all it takes. But there's some suffering we have to go through as children of God. Yes, there's some persecution. The Bible said, those that live godly shall and will suffer persecution. Education has form. Man. Timothy's 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Ever learning and able, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You could go to school and learn Bible, but never come into the truth. Many goes because they want a degree, they want a doctrine, a paper. They do anything to get it. But they themselves haven't learned anything much. They might answer the question, but they're not walking in what they have been taught. We live in the most educated society in history. Scientific achievement medical discovery and have made tremendous contribution to our world. But mankind is still frustrated and searching for fulfillment. That's something. It's all right here. I could get educated and I thank God for the education of man as a child coming up. I know what it is to be born here in Bridgeport, Connecticut, living on the south end of Bridgeport, Connecticut, right on the corner of Main Street and South Avenue, and knowing what a pot belly stove is, 
where you have to use coal. <laughs> then you went to wood. No, you went to wood. Don't make no wood because I had cut some. Then coal, then kerosene, then the gas. But thank God for a good old yellow mill bush. What they end up calling Father Panic. <laughs> After leaving my grandmother, grandfather's house, we would go home to our house in Yellow Mill Village Building 5, apartment 114, right there on Waterview Avenue, looking at the river. Walk in the house, flick a switch. <laughs> you want to take a bath? You go in there and you turn the water on. You wanted to use the stove, you take a match or the little flick thing and it's sparking. But my grandmother's house, she had to boil some water. You, you hear me say these stories over and over again. Because what I went through, and I thank God for the change when I got home. And that's when I thank God for the life of sin. But a change came now that I got into the word. I got an understanding. I got a better life. I thought I was living back then. Mm. But I wasn't living. I was hardly living. <laughs> mm. But now I know what life is all about. But I appreciate what I had to go through in order to realize what I got now. Because if I had not gone through what I went through, I would have never known how to appreciate what I had. Tell the Lord, thank you. There's many things that we took for granted. But look at now. So we're looking at how God, education comes along. It can meet our mental and physical needs, but to meet our spiritual need, be changed by a spiritual birth. That's the only way. Coming here to let you know, Jesus Christ can transform. Just in case you didn't know it. Jesus can transform. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, So then, if any man in Christ, he's a new creature. What is old has passed away. Look what is new has come. According to Webster's, transforms mean to change in nature, heart, to convert. That's exactly what Jesus Christ does for those who come to him. I thank God for the change. Never had so much peace in my life. Might not have everything that everybody had, but I got peace within. I got security. I know I'm loved because I found the proof. We like to say my brother, the son of God, died to prove that he loved us so much. But when we repent, hallelujah, our sins and believe we are forgiven as we commit our life totally to Christ. He cleanses and fill us with God's divine love. It's a change. You, you're in the word. Use the word. Apply it. Have you been transformed? Mm. I've given you some word of who a Christian is and how to develop. Now the question is, have you been changed? It is not, it is time for a change, okay? Here it is. Has you been transformed? If not, it's time for a change. Galatians chapter 5, 22 again and 24. Here it is. When you know you've been changed. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. There you go. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. Now those who believe and belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with this passion and desire. My passion, my desire is to do the things and walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Romans 8, it begins to let us know, chapter 10, verse for those that's out there that don't know the Lord, I'm just going to bring a little what it tells with you that don't know him. It's time for you to get to know him as a Christian, to start off to be a Christian. I told you what it is. It's time for a change. I told you about a development. But how do you become a Christian? Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through about 10. 
King James Version said. But what it says, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So today if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the death bearer and the resurrection, Yes, he was buried. He rose. Okay. Do you believe that Jesus came? If you believe and accept him as your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Bible lets us know you could be saved. That's how you become a Christian. And what I've given you about what is Christian and how you need to develop how to change. But I'm going back how do you become a Christian is you accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this day. So this day, say, Father, I receive him. I receive you as my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. I receive and believe that Jesus is the Savior. And this day, I confess with my mouth and believe it in my heart that I am saved in Jesus' name.